Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, I would like to continue uh, solving certain problems related to exponential functions. Um, it's not maybe so much solving problems um, as uh, rather just analyzing how this function behaves in certain cases. Um, so, without further ado, um, I have two different problems. Actually, it's three, but the second and the third are very much related. And all of them are about steepness of exponential function. Let's talk about steepness a little bit more. We did discuss this in the previous lecture, but I would like to spend some more time. How can we uh, determine steepness as precisely as possible? Now, if you have one function and another function, which are very close in this particular point, actually they have one common point, and basically they are tangential in certain way, how to determine that this function is less steep than this function in this particular case? Well, the typical uh, approach in this particular uh, in this particular problem is just have a tangential line. Tangential line is actually determining um, the steepness. How? Uh, steep tangential line is, that's exactly how steep the line, uh, the, the line is. So, although this line is, seems to be uh, less steep than this one, because they share the same tangent, uh, we are talking about the same steepness in this particular case. Maybe a little further, steepness would be different, would be this or this. So, in this particular point, uh, steepness is different. But in this, where these two lines are touching each other, uh, that, that's basically the steepness, uh, that's where the steepness is the same. So, steepness of the function is determined at any particular point by the tangential line. Now, we don't really know how to do, uh, how to approach tangential lines for any kind of a curve. This is a subject of uh, analysis in, in mathematics. Um, the, uh, 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 derivatives and, and, and stuff like this. It's all related to limit theory. However, we can approximate uh, tangential lines and therefore steepness by using a very simple approach. If you have um, some kind of a line, the steepness of which we would like to determine, what we can do to approximate this steepness in, let's say, in this particular point. We can step a little bit further from this point, let's say, to the right, and, um, and have the core, basically, that's what it is, difference between difference between increment of the function divided by the difference in increment of the argument. So how far the function grows if argument grows. So if this particular distance is relatively small, then this chord which connects these two points would probably be very close to tangential line, at least for the smooth curve. And um, basically having this particular ratio would give, would give us an approximation for uh, steepness of this particular uh, tangent, tangential line. So I will be using this approach to analyze steepness of the exponential function in some points. So I'm, I'm going to take two points and compare what's the increment of the function as I go from one point to another relative to increment of the argument. Okay, that's the preliminary kind of an introduction to whatever I'm going to talk about. Now, 
let's consider a function and we all know that the graph looks like this so it looks like the steepness is increasing as my argument a greater than one as my argument grows how to prove it how can I state with certain certainty that this steepness is increasing here is how let's just take two different uh, um, let's take three different points. This would be a, a natural number n. This will be the next natural number, n plus 1, and this would be the previous, n minus 1. And let's compare how my function increments as I go from here to here, and from here to here. If for any n I will prove that increment from n to n plus 1 of the function value is always greater than the increment from n minus 1 to n. It means that the steepness of our function is always increasing with every next natural number n. Because the difference between the arguments is 1. So when I divide by 1, So x2 minus x1 is always 1. This is x2, uh, this is x1. Or this is x2 and this is x1. So the, the, the denominator is always 1. So I don't have to really take it into account. That's easier. So now I have to compare only the difference between increments of the function. So what I'm going to prove that this piece, which is a to the n plus 1 minus a to the n, Right? This is n to the n plus 1, and this is a to the nth. I would like to prove that this is, this is a to the nth minus a, a to the n minus 1. So I would like to prove that a to the n plus 1 minus a to the n is greater than a to the n minus a to the n minus 1. Now, if I will be able to prove this, then what follows is that this increment is greater than this, which means the function grows faster and faster and faster as we go to infinity. And that's basically the most important qualitative uh, information uh, or, or characteristic of the exponential function with base greater than 1, which I would like to convey. So, much, so, so many words for such a simple proof, actually. The proof is very trivial here. Let's uh, bring everything to the left. It would be a to the n plus 1 minus 2 to the a to the n plus a to the n minus 1. I have to prove that this is greater than 0. I will factor out n minus 1, a to the n minus 1 degree. What I will have here, a to the second degree, right? If I'm multiplying a to the n minus 1 times a to the second degree, my exponents are supposed to be added together, so n minus 1 plus 2 will be n plus 1. Now, in this particular case, I will have minus 2a. This is the first um, power, and this is n minus 1, so if I'm going to multiply a to, the minus n, a to the n minus 1 times a to the first degree, I will have a to the power of n, n minus 1 plus 1. So that's what I will have. And here I will have 1. Now, this is obviously true because a is greater than 1 base, and this is a minus 1 square. a minus 1 square is a square minus 2a plus 1. So this is positive, this is positive, so this is positive. And transformations are reversible. That's why this follows from this, this follows from this, and this is true, so this, why, this is why this is true. Therefore, I have proven that as I go further towards increasing numerical value of the argument, at least if I will go by natural numbers, by integer numbers, uh, and, and, and increment them, then the steepness grows. Now, does it mean that it, it grows for rational numbers, which are in between these uh, 
uh, natural numbers or irrational? Yes, because if you remember, I did prove that the function is monotonic. So it's monotonically increasing, and that's why we have always the same kind of inequality. Okay, now, um, it's actually, what I have what I have actually done, I've proved this theorem about increasing um, steepness for natural numbers which are to the right of zero. How about to the left of zero? Well, it's exactly the same thing. Because what is to the left of zero if you will get, let's say, three points here? It will be minus n minus 1, minus n, and minus n plus 1, right? where n, again, is a natural number. So let's prove exactly the same uh, inequality, that a to the minus n minus 1 minus a to the minus n, so it's the difference between this value of the function and, and, and this one, is greater than between value of the function at point minus n minus n plus 1. Now, how can I prove this? Again, bring everything to the left, a to the n, and I will just replace negative um, exponent with a, an inverted positive one. That's what it is. a to the power of minus n minus 1 is 1 over a to the power of n minus 1 by definition. Minus 2 a to, the, uh, a to the n. I inverted a to the minus n as 1 over a to the n, and plus uh, 1 over a to the n plus 1. I have to prove that this is greater than 0. How can I do it? Uh, well, if I will factor out a to the power of n plus 1, I will have a square here. Indeed, if you will put a square multiplied by a to the power of minus n, minus n plus 1 in, in parentheses, you will get minus n minus 1 plus 2, which is a to the power of n minus 1. Minus 2a, a times a to the power of minus n plus 1 would be a to the power of minus n plus plus 1. And again, this is positive, and this is the same a minus 1 square. So everything is reversible, so this is proven as well. Again, my theorem is exactly the same. The function is exceedingly steep. As we move from left to right, we always have greater and greater increment of uh, the function uh, on the same unit increment of the argument. Okay. Um, I spent a lot of time explaining this, but the proof, as you, as, as you saw, was very easy. Now it will be a slightly different situation. The proof will, will be a little bit more complex. And here is what I would like to talk about. Now we have different functions which have this kind of a property, this kind of a look, if you wish. Some of them are less steep. Some of them are more steep. So this is 2 to the power of x. And this is 3 to the power of x. Now, here is my point. Steepness is different in this point, point x is equal to 0. What's interesting is that if you draw a tangential line to this function,
Okay, this is a bisector, uh, uh, a 45 degrees angle. So this tangential line would go below 45 angles on a positive number. And tangential line to y is equal to 3 to the power of x will be above. So the steepness which we have determined as the ratio between increment of the function versus increment of the argument. Now this steepness is equal to 1 for angle bisector, right? Because whenever you have increment of the function, you will have the same increment of the argument, because this is a 45 degree, this is 45 degrees. So, for angle bisector at 45 degrees, the steepness is equal to 1. Now, for 2 to the power of x, the steepness at point 0 would be less than 1, and for 3 to the power of, uh, power of x would be greater than 1 at point 0. So, this is my statement, that 2 to the power of x is below angle bisector at 45 degrees, and 3 to the power of x is above. Okay, now let's try to prove it. Here, I would do a little bit more uh, precise variation of the steepness. So, what I will do is, before I was uh, using increments of 1, like n, n plus 1, n plus 2, etc. Here, I will use a small increment. Let's say I will have an increment 1 over n. Now, the greater n I will take, the closer this particular point will be to 0, and that's why closer this increment would be to the increment of the tangential line. So, if I will use this particular increment of the argument, 1 nth, and I will prove that regardless of n, my ratio which represents the steepness is less than 1 for 2 to the power of x. For any n, it means however big, which means however close these points are, that actually will prove that even in the limit case, when, this, when these points are infinitely close to each other, I still will have the same inequality and still my tangential line would be uh, uh, less steep than uh, 45 degrees angle. So the steepness would be less than 1. So I will use 1 nth as my checkpoint, and I will basically then prove this theorem for any n, which means that the points can be however close, and my uh, variation would be however precise. So what does it mean for 2 to the power of x? Well, let's think about it. This value versus this value. So y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So y2 would be 2 to the power of 1n, 1 over n. And y1 would be 2 to the power of 0 at this point. So this is basically the increment of the function. Now, what's the increment of the argument? Well, 1n, 1 over n, minus 0. And I would like to prove that this is less than 1. And I'm going to prove it for any n, regardless of n. Well, OK, let's do it. Um, first of all, we can simplify it. To the power, 2 to the power of 0 is 1. So it would be. 2 to the power of 1 over n minus 1. And I will multiply, now this is 1 over n, so I will multiply both sides of the inequality by 1 over n, 
So I will have to prove this. This is invariant transformation. So this, this is what we have to prove. OK, let me make it even better. I will put 1 on the right side. So it would be 2 to the power of 1 n should be less than 1 plus 1 over n. And uh, now what is 2 to the power of 1 over n? It's nth root of 2. So I will raise both sides to the nth degree, nth power of n. I will have 2 to, on the left and 1 plus 1 tenths to the nth degree on the right. So this is the final inequality which I would like to prove. And this is completely uh, equivalent to, to this one because I did not make any non-invariant transformation. All transformations are invariant from here to here to here to here. So I'm going to prove this. OK. Now, what's interesting is that if we know something important, it's very easy to prove. And what is this important thing? Uh, some time ago, when I was lecturing about uh, mathematical induction, I introduced the binomial formula, which was derived by Newton first. So I'm going to use it. Now, for those who don't remember, I do suggest you to go to the corresponding lecture on induction. Uh, it's uh, in Mass Concepts uh, uh, chapter of, uh, of this course. And uh, just refresh your memory. Anyway, I'm just going to use it here. Now. It's a to the power of n plus n divided by 1, a to the power of n minus 1, b. So I will increase the number of uh, multipliers here, and the power is being reduced by uh, 1 on every new member for a and increased by 1 on every new ma na na uh, member uh, for B. Now, the common um, common element of this uh, particular case, let's say, element is n multiplied by n minus 1, etc., n minus k plus 1, divided by 1 times 2, etc., times k. Right? Should be k multipliers on the top, starting from n down, on the bottom, starting from 1 up, k multipliers. And the, the number of multipliers represents the same as uh, powers n minus k for a and b. OK. And uh, the last member would be n, n minus 1, blah, 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 up to 1, from 1 to up to n, uh, b. Well, actually, I can put a to the 0 and b to the n. The same way as here, I can put for commonality b to the power of 0. So this is my binomial formula. Again, derived by Newton, uh, and you can refresh your memory by looking at the lecture. I'm going to use it for this particular um, uh, expression and it's quite obvious that right now, if I will drop all the members of this particular formula, which are all positive, by the way, except the first two, so I will leave in this formula only the first two members, which is 1 to the power of n. So uh, you don't need this. You don't need this. So 1 plus 1 over n to the power of n equals. So a is 1, b is 1 over n, and n is n. Now, 1 to the power of n, which is 1, b to the power of 0 plus n, which is the exponent, times uh, a, which is uh, 1 to the power of uh, n minus 1, which is 1 and times b. Plus doesn't matter what. I already have 2. You see? This is 1 plus 1, which is 2. 
So, without this tail, I have two. With this tail, I will have greater than two. That's it. So, if you know the formula, it's very easy to derive this particular inequality. Okay, so we have proven that 2 to the power of x lies below uh, 45 degrees angle um, at, at the point 0. Now let's talk about 3 to the power of x, and I'm, uh, uh, I will prove that it will be above. Now, very similarly, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, if y is equal to 3 to the power of x. Now, my x1 is equal to 0, x2 is equal to 1 over n, right? So that's my graph. This is 0, this is 1 over n, this is my 45 degrees, and I am claiming that, well, I have to draw it not through the point 0, obviously, but through the point 1. So I'm claiming that it goes this way, above this particular line. All right. So y2 minus y1 would be at the point where x is equal to 1 uh, one n's, it would be 3 to the power of 1 over n. Uh, uh, this point is x, x1 is 0, so it would be 3 to the power of 0 divided by 1 over n minus, minus 0. And I would like to prove that in this particular case, it would be greater than 1. Okay. So this is inequality which I would like to prove, and I will do exactly the same as before. So this is 1, this is 0, right? So it's uh, 3 to the power of 1 over n minus 1 should be greater than 1 n, or 3 to the power of 1 n should be greater than 1 plus 1 n, or if I will raise both into the power of n, it would be 3 should be greater than 1 plus 1 over n to the nth degree. So that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to prove using the same binomial formula. So let me just write it down on the left. 1 plus 1 over n to the nth degree should be less than 3. I reversed it, right? It would be 3 greater than this. I wrote it as 1 plus 1 n over n to the power of n less than 3. Okay, how can I prove that? Using exactly the same formula. Now it's a little bit more difficult. However, not impossible. Um, let me do it this way. So, a is 1 and b is 1 nth. So let me rewrite it in the following fashion. 1 plus 1 n to the nth degree is equal, and I will use this formula. So wherever I have a, I can just completely drop it because a is equal to 1, and this is multiplier uh, everywhere. So I will use only b, which is 1 nth. Now in this particular case, it would be uh, b to the power of 0, which is 1. Then I will have n divided by 1 times, drop the a, b is 1 n plus n, n minus 1 divided by 1 times 2, drop the a, it would be 1 over n squared plus, etc. What's my common member? Common member is n, n minus 1, etc., n minus k plus 1 divided by 1 times 2, etc., k, drop a, uh, 1 over n to the power of k, plus, etc. Forget about the last one. Now, from here, it's quite obvious now that this is 1, this is 1. 
Now, this is greater than Uh, this is greater than 1 over 2. Here is why. This is n times n minus 1 in the numerator, and denominator is greater. It's n times n. So n times n minus 1 will always be less than n squared. And 2 remains as it is. Now, as far as my common member is less than, I will do exactly um, the same but uh, uh, separately for numerator and, and denominator. Now, numerator n times n minus 1, etc., etc., divided by n uh, to the power of k. This is a less than 1, because numerator is less than denominator in this case. And these I will replace as 2 times 2, etc., times 2. So, I will decrease this part, denominator, since I decrease denominator from from 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times k, I put only 1 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So the denominator is diminished by this, because every multiplier is now, well, either the same or smaller. And, not even that, I'm increasing uh, this, particular, uh, uh, this particular fraction by replacing this piece with 1. So I'm increasing this fraction by twice actually, by decreasing the denominator and increasing whatever is left of it. So when I'm replacing n times n minus 1, etc., divided by n to the power of k, this is the same number of multipliers as here. k different numbers here and k here. These numbers are smaller than these numbers, right? This is n, which is the same, next one, n minus 1, and this is n. So every one of them on the, on the top is smaller than this one. So if I will replace it with 1, I'm only increasing the whole uh, element. And I'm also increasing by replacing whole members uh, in the denominator with 2s. So this would be my common member. And what actually I am ending up with, I am ending up with 2 plus 1, 2, one second, plus 1 quarter, plus 1 eighths, right? It's number, it's 2 multiplied by itself, plus etc, plus etc. Now, um, obviously from um, progressive uh, from progressions uh, which, which are addressed in, in another lecture, this is obviously less than 1. So it's less than 2 plus 1, which is equal to 3. Well, this is actually quite easy to, even if you don't know progressions, it's quite easy to, to see, because what is this? Let's draw a square, one half of the square, which is this plus one quarter of the square, which is this, plus one eighth of the square, which is this, plus one sixteenth, which is this, etc. So we are gradually filling up whatever it is, but no more than the whole square. So even if you don't know progressions, um, they are addressed a little bit further maybe down in the course, but you can definitely see that this piece is less than one, so the whole thing is less than three. So I'm using certain 
pieces of knowledge which might be a little bit more uh, advanced, however, they are addressed in the lectures, so you're welcome to refresh your memory or learn it separately. So the binomial formula of Newton and some of the progression uh, are used in this particular case, but if you have it in your repertoire, the whole thing is actually simple, because all I did is I just reduced each number uh, each member of this uh, of this sequence to get whatever I need. So that basically completes the proof that the graph of 3 to the power of x is above um, 45 degrees. And here is just one small uh, side comment about this. Let's just consider again the graph Okay, this is point one, zero one, x, y. So this is 45 degrees angle, okay? So one of my functions, which is, well, actually I can make it a little longer here. Okay, one of my functions, which is three to the power of x, goes this way. It's above. And another function, do they have many different colors? Uh, goes below this, like this. This is 2 to the power of x. I also know, and I did prove it before, that the greater the base, the steeper at every point, the steeper the curve of the exponential function is. So, if I will increase the base from 2 to 3, somewhere between 2 and 3, there is a number where my tangential line is exactly 45 degrees. I mean, that's kind of uh, intuitively understandable um, statement. So if 2 to the power of x has a tangential line which is uh, below 45 degrees and 3 to the power of x is above 45 degrees, it should be something in between which is exactly equal. And actually it does exist. Uh, and that's one of the, well, reasonable definition for a new number which in mathematics is uh, uh, designated by a letter E. Um, which is irrational number, and uh, approximately it's 2.71, but this is just an approximation. It's an infinite number of decimal uh, digits. So the number E plays extremely important role in the analysis. Strangely, however strangely it sounds, this irrational number is probably one of the most important number numbers in analysis. It's like pi in geometry, which is the ratio between the circumference of the circle and diameter. It's irrational number, pi, uh, and, you know, we are, we are probably used to think that uh, nice numbers like 1, 2, 3 are the most important. Actually, no. In geometry, pi is probably the most important number, and in analysis, E is probably the most important number, and both are ir irrational. Anyway, that's it for today. Uh, I do encourage you to try to reconstruct the proof again by yourself. If you can't, just listen to the lecture again. It's very important for you to understand how these things are you know, logically derived from some previous knowledge which you might have, which is uh, binomials and, uh, and progressions. And it's interesting what's the uh, origin of uh, this particular number. Why is it so important? That's it. Thank you very much, and good luck.